How do you navigate an ever complex quagmire to attract more clients? Welcome to Business Without Barriers, the show helping you tap into the greatness and genius within you to turn barriers into breakthroughs, and the show bringing humanity back to business. To be part of this journey of discovery with progressive entrepreneurs willing to open their vaults and share their success treasures with us, subscribe at bwbtv.net and together, let's write a new human story. I'm your host, Carmen Wild, and my guest today is Steve Gordon. Steve is the founder of The Unstoppable Agency, a marketing firm that specializes in helping professional service firms attract more and better clients. He's the host of the Unstoppable CEO podcast and the best-selling author of Unstoppable Referrals and the Exponential Network Strategy. Over the last two decades, Steve has developed over 30 marketing sales and sales strategies and published over 400 articles. For most entrepreneurs, the eternal question is, how do I land more clients. So Steve, it's a very, very warm welcome to you. A privilege to have you on the show today. Carmen, thanks for having me here. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Steve, share with us what's an unexpected, fun or quirky thing that most people wouldn't know about you? Well, I'm, <clears throat> so I'm a recovering engineer. There, There's not a lot of quirkiness <laughs> to that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, um, probably the most surprising thing that I could say is that I am a relatively new vegan who loves to barbecue and I haven't, I haven't oh. yet, uh, <laughs> sorted out the, uh, the conflict there, but, uh, we're working on it. Well, it sounds to me in a few months time, we need to get you on the podcast again to figure out how you, you sorted that conflict out. There you go. <laughs> I'll have some recipes. Uh, wonderful. How how long are you into this new interesting um, challenge? Uh, I say relatively new. We've been doing it for about two years now, but okay. uh, I find it to be a continual really? challenge. Um, you know, because I I I still like to eat lots of different things, and I uh, yeah. you know it's always a challenge to avoid. And I. However, you would not be doing this for two years if there weren't some amazing upside you've experienced in the last two oh, years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, not to take us down too much of a gravel road, but mm. um, we did it to help combat a health issue that my my daughter was facing. And uh, even though that has sort of um, subsided, my wife and I are still doing it because we had so much more energy. We felt mm. so much healthier. Um, and so much better. And so I like to, to tell everyone, we're not religiously vegan. I don't care if you are. I'm not trying to convince you to be. Yes. Uh, but it's just working for us for right now. I don't know if it'll always be that way, but it's working for us for now. Okay. And you've touched on something so important that matters in business too. When you have purpose, so you had a purpose to, to go on this venture that, that's quite sort of tug of war for you. Yet you're able to do it for two years already and still on the journey and Business is exactly the same. So maybe we can go into that. Um, Apart from purpose, which we know is ultimately important to be unstoppable, tell us about why it's so important to know exactly what you want rather than just not, not, you know, knowing what you don't want. So I I think that's really critical. Um, And uh, I actually just a few days ago recorded a podcast with a good friend of mine on this topic. And, um, you know, we got talking around the idea as we go into a new year of, you know, everybody's looking around and, and clear that we don't want what we've had over the last Mm -hmm. year. So I, as we record this and, you know, we're going into 2021. So we've ended what has been one of the more challenging years of, of my lifetime for sure. It's very clear what we don't want, but I think it's much more difficult for people to, really understand and and want what they truly do, you know, understand what they want and then want that thing mm-hmm. for no other reason than that you want it. And I think a lot of us, particularly in business, we want to make money, we want to have an impact, um, we want to do really big things. And a lot of times I think we run around trying to justify 
to other people, why we want to do those things. And I learned this from a mentor of mine, a guy named Dan Sullivan, that the the really only reason you ever need to use to justify why you want something is simply because you want it. And I, I really think that holds a lot of people back. Mm. Uh, and I think it creates a lot of internal conflict. Mm. What have you found to help people crystallize this? I mean, this, this is like an eternal question, just like how the hell do we market better? <laughs> it's, it's as big a question. Well, I, I think it it's fundamental to business. So if you want to market better, I think getting clear on what you really are trying to build, what the company that you want looks like, how do you want to market it? I, I see so many people going out trying to promote their business and doing it in a way that everyone else tells them they should do instead mm-hmm. of doing it in the way that they want to do, that's, that's comfortable for them, that matches their personality and what they're trying to accomplish. And so I think getting to this level of clarity is really sort of the, the root of, of success in business. Now, getting there is, uh, I wish I had a perfect three-step how-to process for it. I don't think it's quite that easy. I think it, it requires asking the question, what do I want? And mm-hmm. actually spending some time with yourself trying to answer that and, and probably uh, doing that repeatedly over time because mm-hmm. you're you know, your wants are going to evolve mm-hmm. and the way that you understand them is going to evolve as well. Mm-hmm. And I think it's about perspective um, because you, you've got such an amazing, um, I think it was an article that sells, uh, says why you don't need 10,000 prospects and the secret juju of the target 100. <laughs> Love that topic. Um, which, which talks to this. So if you're going to set a target of 10,000, your strategy is going to be out there. If you have a, you realize, well, actually to get what I truly want, I need 100 qualified targets. Um, it's going to be different. So talk to us about what you've experienced there when people are up there, but they actually only need <laughs> this. Well, you know, to, to bring this whole idea kind of down to the practical mm. level, mm. Um, you know, if, if you're going to go out and, and choose a particular way to promote your business, it matters greatly what your end goal is. So if you're trying to build a hundred million dollar business and you need thousands and thousands of customers, then you're going to take a different approach than somebody who's selling a really high end consulting service where maybe they're, you know, each client's worth, you know, a million dollars. And, um, you know, and, and you only need one or two or, or 10 of those in a year to hit your goals. So I think understanding what you want will then inform how do I need to go to market? And that's really, that was sort of the point of that article. We work with mm-hmm. people all the time who are, when you ask them the, the number of clients that they need over the course of the next year to hit all of their, their wildest goals and dreams, mm-hmm. oftentimes the answer is, well, if I had five, of the right clients, or if I had 10 of the really great clients, mm-hmm. or maybe 20, but it's rarely more than 20 wow. that I hear. And, um, and that's a very different problem to try and solve mm-hmm. than, you know, I need to go and run advertisements on Google and Facebook and everywhere mm-hmm. else to go get, you know, a thousand or 5,000 or 10,000 customers this year. And so it, it really simplifies things in a lot of ways. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's really what that article was all about. Like, don't, don't go chasing tactics that aren't designed for what you're trying to solve. Understand mm-hmm. what you want to solve and then apply the right strategies and tactics. Mm. I really love it. And, and it, it, it focuses our minds so much, brings the clarity and removes all the flip and noise and the clutter and the rabbit hole that we go into. Uh, when I read that, and uh, your, your articles are brilliant, by the way, and your, your, you. your books are, are amazing. I mean, the amount of value you are providing in, in such a few pages actually is incredible. And I really appreciate that because so many of the marketing um, experts out there are sending us down the rabbit hole and making, you know, this, you have to impact you know, there's so many people who, who, who put it out there. I want to impact a billion people. And I thought, well, how much is a billion? 
you know, it's that perspective again. Have you actually thought about how much a billion is? Mm-hmm. And, and it's the same, again, even the number a million, I want to impact a million people. Well, when you bring it back down, you know, do we actually know what we're meaning? So absolutely, let's, let's look at what do we want? Why do we want that? And what does it actually mean in practical terms? Well, you know, you, I know you're all about bringing the humanity back mm. into business. And I think mm. one of the things that, that is tempting to do and that, that sometimes we all want to do is we want to make others like us. Yeah. And I don't, you know, that's, that's a, that's a human quality. It's not necessarily a good human quality. <laughs> uh, and so the, there's all this pressure to have this mega impact because some businesses and the ones that tend to get a lot of the press are set up that way because that's newsworthy. You know, if you're going to impact, forget, you know, a billion, if you're going to impact a million people, that's newsworthy. And so you see that in the press. And I think you see a lot of people, particularly right now, we're seeing an entrepreneurial revolution um, happening across the globe because Mm -hmm. a lot of the institutions that we've had for the last, you know, 50 or hundred years are sort of going away. The, you know, the big corporate job here in the U S that used to be the way that you, you provided for your family and you got ahead isn't what it used to be. And Mm -hmm. people are looking at different paths, most of them being entrepreneurial. That's great. That's a wonderful thing. But you're seeing a lot of people come into it now. And the examples that are put forth are the businesses that that are newsworthy, that make the press. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth is the vast majority of people don't want that. And that's okay. And it's not that there's anything bad with the people that want to make the big impact. We need that. We need some people to go out and make that huge impact and make those changes. You know, we need Apple to, you know, and Steve Jobs to do what, mm. what he did with Apple. So we all have our iPhones and all of that stuff, but everybody can't do that. Mm. We also need the attorney or the consultant who's a real expert at what they do to go and help the 10 or 15 or 20 people mm. every year that they're going to help and do that with excellence as well. Mm. And I, you know, so I think, I mentioned at the beginning, I I said, I'm not religiously vegan. What I meant by that is I'm not trying to convince anybody to agree with me or do what I do. It works for me. And I think from a business perspective, we all have to do that. And then, then we, once we know what we want, what we're trying to build, then we can go and match what we're going to do to build that to, to that plan we have. It's sort of like Mm -hmm. having the the blueprint for the house before we go and buy the lumber and the tools and everything. Yeah. And, you know, what you're saying there as well is if if we're in an entrepreneurial revolution, if every single entrepreneur came into it with the mindset that they're going to add value to at least their basket of clients, well, we'd have a better world anyway, because if everyone was doing that, we'd be adding more value, solving more problems. And we would have widespread impact, but as a collective rather than one person trying to do that and maybe even failing at the, uh, in, in, in the process of doing that because the, the expectations are too high. Um, which brings me to the value question. When you're in this sea of uh, business and digital stuff and free, I mean, free is, do people even value free right now? When it comes to marketing, how do you create value? You know, what is the what have you found for people to perceive the value so that you can attract those leads? What are the kind of things that people are looking for from a value perspective? Well, I, I think the question's actually backwards. Mm-hmm. I think you start with who am I trying to, to serve? Mm-hmm. Okay, who do I really want to impact? We go back to this idea of impact. Mm -hmm. If you don't know that, then you can't realistically bring anything of value to those people because you don't know who they are. Okay. You know, value is in the eye of the the recipient. Yes. And so you've got to get really clear on who you want to have an impact on. We call that the ideal client. We Mm -hmm. take everyone we work with through a process where they get clear on that Mm -hmm. and they ask questions and, and really think about 
what do these people want? Because they, they, they usually know. They usually have served those types of people before. They know what they value. They know where the impact is. And oftentimes we get caught up, I think, in business in talking about what we do from our perspective Mm. rather than from the perspective of the people we're trying to help. So we want to get inside their heads and inside their, their thinking to understand what's really most important about what it is that I'm, I'm doing for them. Mm. And it's often not what we think it is on the surface. Mm. You know, there are, you know, if we dig a, a few layers deep, we'll find here's the real thing that they value or that they mm. appreciate. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to understand that, now you know how to go back and infuse that into your marketing to give value to others like them. Mm. And which is what I appreciate about what the way in which you put out your, your value. So there's a very clear message. You're aligned across everything that you're doing. You're not like selling eggs on this side and then trucks on the other side. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very aligned. And every single one of the articles or book or whatever it is you put in out, I feel like you're taking me on a journey, even though it's a free piece of information. You, you, you speak about the problem as if you really understand me the client you then go into what you shouldn't do and 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 I love that like you don't need these thousand tactics you only need three things and let me tell you what those three things based on experience I really appreciated that because I've been measuring what am I valuing when I am you know consuming stuff and 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 that's so just to to share that because we get caught up Thank in you. what it is that we it's a pleasure what it is that we need to put out um it's like you say it's it's in the eye of the recipient <laughs> which is so true if we go back to when it all started for you um what what do you think shaped you into this unstoppable ceo we know today well, first, I'm not the unstoppable CEO. Uh, oh. that, name, that name actually came from a conversation I was having with a buddy of mine. And yeah. he was asking me who we really wanted to uh, serve in the business mm -hmm. early on. And mm -hmm. I was describing, you know, the, the business owner who'd been in business for a while. They had, you know, they'd been presented with all of these challenges. They had those nights, you know, staring at the ceiling, wondering how am I going to make payroll? And mm -hmm. somehow... They figured out a way to make it through and just keep going. And he said, oh, they're mm. unstoppable. And I said, well, there we go. We've, we've got our word. So, uh, <laughs> so it really describes the people that we serve because okay. they are unstoppable. Yes. And, and so when, when you talk about your first business, was that maybe more like you in your, in your first business when you started out? Uh, you know, we, my, my first business, um, first of all, when I started, I started there out of college. Mm. and uh, and was an employee for a few years. And I'd been there for about four years and the founder asked me to take over for him as CEO. And um, it was it was an interesting uh, ride, particularly at first because I came in and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was 28 years old and I had people who were, you know, 20 years older than me and far more knowledgeable and more experienced and now working for me. Um, and it was just a, it was a challenging transition at first, but we got it together and we were able to grow that company. And, and uh, I, I don't think I really uh, got to the point of understanding how to be unstoppable until I left and I started mm. this one because mm. taking over a business that's running mm. has its challenges. Starting a business from scratch is a whole different ballgame. Yes. And, uh, and as much as I thought I knew coming into it, it was a challenge unlike any I've ever done. And, mm. uh, and I think most people experience that when they start a business, mm. there are so many things mm. that have to be overcome. Uh, most of which are internal mm. that yes. you have to deal with and uh, you know, in your own kind of growth. And, um, and so I just have the, the utmost respect for anybody who does it. And how did you, for you then, because so many people, like you say, we've got a revolution happening. So many people are, diving into this and they have no idea what's going to be thrown at them in so many ways. And that battle is mostly internal. What did you find helped you to, to move through that? 
Uh, lots of things. Uh, first, um, staying uh, grounded by a group of, of close friends mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. were also entrepreneurs. So I had a, 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 a mastermind, for lack of a better word, not an okay. official mastermind where you write a big check and all that, but um, a, a group of a few friends that uh, we got together on a regular basis and supported one another and talked through these things. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was just a, a great place to uh, safely sort of air the challenges that I was mm. feeling. And I think everybody needs that. Mm. Um, you need to get plugged into a relationship or, or a few relationships where you really have that level of trust where you can be honest because yes. there are going to be things that don't go well. There's going to be things that go really well and you need them to, to sort of check your enthusiasm when things are going really well <laughs> and tell you, okay, that's great, but be prepared. <laughs> and they also need to lift you up and say, look, you can keep going a little further mm. when things look bleak. Mm. Well, lovely. And, and I'm assuming then that most of these people were in business. So it was a bunch of entrepreneurs coming together to support each other, not just, yep. okay, great. Really nice, n- nice idea. Was there anything else that comes to mind that, that was particularly helpful for you? Well, I, I think the other big thing um, is, is just reading. Um, mm. I, um, I have tried to always read um, a great deal. I try and read, you know, at least two, three books a month. Sometimes more. I used to do more. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so much wisdom out there from people who have been through the process before and um, and being able to to pull that together um, and sort of apply it to what you're doing is to me books are the the greatest value on the planet you know mm-hmm. for for ten or twenty dollars mm-hmm. you can go and and really learn from someone and they've put all of their best thinking together and uh, and really filtered it for you uh, it's there's no other other way that you can get that kind of transfer of knowledge it's it's amazing. Mm. And you also share with us that a book is the ultimate selling machine. So tell us about that. Seeing that we've brought up well, the whole the book thing. <laughs> well, so think if you think about what what your experience is with a book. When you get a book and you begin to read it, and I, I mean a nonfiction book, you read on this topic that you're interested in, probably because you're feeling a challenge in that area, or you you have something that you want to gain. Uh, some knowledge or something that you want to gain. And you begin a relationship with that author when you buy the book. And assuming then you actually follow through and read it, most people don't, but it, let's let's just assume you follow through and read it. You now get to know the author. By the time you're done, it's very likely that you feel as though uh, you have not a, a real in-person relationship, but a semblance of a relationship. You know how this person thinks. And if they also have a business where they offer additional resources, there's a really good chance that if they point you to those resources, you're going to go look for them and you're going to see them as a a trusted advisor to you. And the book is is really the the best way to communicate that because it, it carries more authority than any other type of information. So we're, you know, content marketing is all the rage right now. And it's great. I, I do a ton of it. You, you mentioned all the articles that I've written. I've written a, a ton of articles. I have a podcast. We just have surpassed 200 episodes. So I do all kinds of content marketing. But the very most impactful content that I ever create are my books. Mm-hmm. And the the reason for that is they have staying power and they have a um, a weight that an article or a podcast episode mm-hmm. by itself does not carry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I have, uh, in fact, here, I'm, you know, this is a, a book I'm reading right now by a guy named Jim Collins. It's sitting here on my desk. So Jim Collins right now owns five and a half by eight and a half inches <laughs> of my desk. He owns real estate in my office. Okay. And what I've been able to do with my books and what we do with our clients is they're able to, to send those books out into the world and own real estate in the office, or in one case, I had one of my books, I had a client who came to me. Uh, He said, a buddy of mine gave me your book two years ago. It's been sitting on my nightstand next to my bed for two years. I haven't read it. I'm tired of looking at it. I need, I need what the title says. You're my guy. And can you help me? 
you know, because I owned that real estate and had a little mm. billboard there reminding him, mm. he didn't even have to read it. Now, if he read it, he'd have likely been uh, an even better prospect and sooner. But uh, that, to me, that's the power of of a book. People don't throw them away. It's taboo in our society to throw books away. And, uh, and so they hang on to them and it's just a little reminder that you're there. Uh, mm -hmm. and then you put your best thinking, uh, it's a way to clone your best thinking. Um, I, I talk to professionals all the time who are really expert at what they do. And the, the shame of it all is that the only way to experience their expertise is to make an appointment with them and and that's hard to do because time is limited. It's a way to exponentially multiply your impact in the world and uh, impact and help people that you'll, you may never meet and also attract an awful lot of new business to yourself. So Steve, out of everything that someone that really wants to have impact in the world and, and then of course also wants to attract clients, would you say that is a worthwhile time investment for, an, for someone I with... Mm -hmm. I think every entrepreneur should have a book, period. If, if you've created a business to make a change in your corner of the world, whatever that is, you likely have a, an opinionated view of how whatever you do should be done. And if there's value in your opinionated view of how to go about solving the problems that you solve, then you have every reason to write that down to organize your thinking and to get it out to as many people as you possibly can. And, um, and not simply because it'll have an impact uh, because it will have an impact out in the world, but also selfishly because it will be the best thing that you do in your business. And what I also like about what you are suggesting is because most people thinking about a book, it's like, Oh my word, are you serious? I mean, how do I even start that? And, and we tend to think about books are 250, 300 pages. You're suggesting something else. Tell us about that. Well, I, you know, I, I've written one of those longer books. My first book was um, about 35 or 40,000 words typical sort of business books are in that range on up to about 50 or 60,000. When I sat down to write that book, it was so intimidating to think I have got to put 35,000 words down. I'm not a, at the time, I didn't consider myself a skilled writer. And, uh, and I had tried twice before and failed to finish a book. Um, I'd gotten about halfway through two books and thrown them both in the trash. So between the two of them, I'd written enough words. <laughs> and, um, and so what I discovered in, in the process and finally getting through the project successfully was that it actually didn't have to be difficult. It didn't have to take a lot of time, but the really critical thing was having the right structure. Mm -hmm. And I, that's now that we work with entrepreneurs to help them create books, <laughs> We've learned that having a structure to start with is really the most important step to ensure that you're going to finish the project successfully. And so we've, uh, that first book, I, I had simplified it into, I think we, you know, I, I did an outline where I broke it into five sections and each section was three chapters and each chapter had three main points and each main point had three questions that I wrote down and I spent actually a, a full day, a Saturday. I told my wife, told the kids, look, I'm, I'm just locking myself in the office. I'm mm -hmm. not coming out until I've got the outline for this book done. Cause I want to write this book. Um, that was great. It worked. Um, it was very easy to write because all I had to do is get up every morning and, and answer questions. Um, and so that helped, but what I have found now in trying to, to help other people, write their books is it needs to be even simpler than that. And so we've actually narrowed it down to a one page uh, worksheet that we walk an entrepreneur through mm -hmm. that helps them get the really critical pieces out. Cause we found that really the most important thing is if you get the introduction, right, that's going to be important. If you get the title, right, that's really the single most important thing because that's what gets people to raise the hand. Um, and if you get the conclusion, right, you know, you're going to be really solid and everything that happens in between is great. <laughs> but, uh, but those are the really critical pieces. And so we've got some formulas for those. Fantastic. So I'll have your, your contacts in the show notes. 
because I'm sure there's, a, there's going to be a bunch of people that, that would be interested in, in knowing more about that and, and the way you lay it out and also making it simpler in terms of mind, the mind stuff, where it can be write five books rather than one that's going to immobilize you for the rest of your life. Write five and, you know, and you, together they that uh, the massive one. So um, well, I like your thing. Let, let's, let's talk about, you know, it, on the theme of, of bringing humanity back to business. Yes. For the love of humanity, we don't need another set of anecdotes that are, you know, written in your book just to fluff it up. And mm -hmm. that's what happens in most business books. You get all these stories, which are entertaining, but they, they don't necessarily add value. Mm -hmm. And what we've really done is focused on creating a book that is usually about 80 to 100 pages that the reader can read in about an hour. Mm -hmm. I call them plane ride books. Back when we used to fly on mm -hmm. airplanes, I'd love to get a short little book I could leave. You know, yes. if I could read it from, you know, from where I live here in, in Tallahassee, Florida to Atlanta, which is about an hour flight, that was a great book. And I could learn something. If I could learn something in that hour time, now I've got a lot of value. Mm -hmm. And what we don't want is to create a big book that no one's ever going to consume. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you're better off writing several shorter books on more specific topics, um, it'll actually be better for your marketing as well. Mm. Amazing um, advice and, and something for, for us all to think about. So I want to come back to the, the speaking specifically about the service businesses, which is really the niche that, that you're working in. You, you, you say that it's one of the cha most challenging businesses in the world to, to run. Uh, give us a little bit about that and, and, and what some of the biggest barriers are for service businesses. Yeah, well, I think, I think they're challenging because you know, you're, at, you're simultaneously the CEO, the, uh, the head investor in the business, you're the sales team, the, you know, the janitor oftentimes, and you're the product. And in, in product-based businesses, they've got a staff and a team, and then the, the, and the staff develops the product, and they sell the product, and they manage it, and all of that. But the product goes out and delivers the value. Mm -hmm. And it's separate and distinct from the people. In a service-based business, you can't make that separation. And so as, as service-based businesses get larger, certainly, yes, you might have someone who owns a business where they've got a lot of people delivering the service that work for them. But the vast majority of service businesses are, are ones where the person delivering the service, the expert that you're going to, uh, to, to see to help you is also the person that's going to make the sale, that's doing the books, that's running everything. Um, and it's very, very difficult. And, and particularly that, that switch from, I'm trying to sell you on me and what I can do for you into now I'm going to go, and I call it, the, it's the, the Superman change in the phone booth. You're changing from Clark Kent, who just made the sale into Superman to come out and save the day, right? To help that person and fix their problem. So it's a really hard thing to do. And the reason that it's hard is that a lot of the things that we are are taught to do in selling come from the product sales world. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, particularly when they're focused on uh, really using, um, you know, heavy influence, maybe even bordering on manipulation, they can erode trust. Mm -hmm. But in the service business, somebody has got to trust you to come and then deliver the solution. They have to trust you as a trusted advisor after the sale. If you've eroded trust in them, how are they going to believe that you're really bringing the solution that's in your best interest? And you know, I, if if you look at what has to happen in the you know with doctors, uh, and they've actually done a really good job of this. They, I, I actually think somewhere along the line, they thought very deeply about what we're <laughs> what we're asking people to do. You know, if you go if you go into a doctor's office, you're probably being asked to take your clothes off. People are going to poke and prod you in places that people shouldn't <laughs> poke and prod another person. And, um, and so you've got to really trust them to do that. And at the end of that, they're going to prescribe things that are going to be fairly unpleasant. They might send you to surgery. 
where they're going to cut you open. They might give you medication that's going to have side effects. They may tell you to stop doing things that you really enjoy doing because it's for your own good. If they don't have your trust, they can't deliver a cure. Now, if you're a consultant that's going in to help save a business, you're probably going to go in and you're going to ask a lot of questions and poke and prod them in places that they haven't been poked and prod, prodded as a business before. And then you're going to prescribe a cure of something that they need to do that's going to be difficult for them because they haven't done it before. And they're going to have to trust that what you're telling them is true and is the best course for them out of all of the other options that they have. And they're thinking of all of those options. And if they don't trust you, you can't deliver that cure. You can't deliver any value. Hmm. So how do we do it? How do we get well, that I trust? Think, I, I, I think that's the, the real challenge. I mean, come, that comes back to, to bringing the humanity back. Mm. Um, I actually don't think, I, 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 I want to amend that. I don't think we have to bring the humanity back to business. Mm. I don't think it's been lost. I don't think business works without humanity mm. um, because you need two people who trust each other uh, to, to do business. Mm. And, uh, and so the, the demise of that, I think is, is uh, a great rumor and a great lie mm. there. The relationships that I've created in business are the best relationships I've ever had. Mm. Uh, my, some of my best friends have been clients, you know, who started as a client became a great friend. Some of my best mm -hmm. clients were great friends who became clients. I think it really all boils down to those relationships. And, mm. um, and so as you're thinking about marketing, going back to how do you do this, you want to think, okay, if, if I want to, if my end result is this really great trusting relationship, then everything that I do along the way, from the moment I meet that stranger who is a potential client all the way through the end of the relationship, I've got to be focused on what's going to create trust. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we talked about content marketing and, you know, writing books and those sorts of things. Well, those are ways to create trust because what you're saying is, to someone is I've thought deeply about this. I'm going to demonstrate to you that I've thought deeply about this because I'm going to put it into a book or I'm going to put it into a presentation mm -hmm. that I deliver on a webinar. Or I'm going to write a series of articles on it. And you demonstrate to them first that you're an expert and, um, and, and sort of, you know, you sort of take the first step mm -hmm. of delivering value. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I think it begins there, but it really should be infused all the way through the, the journey of that client. Mm. I certainly hear where you're coming from in terms of you don't think we need to bring it back. However, you're coming from the perspective of someone who is entrenched in, <laughs> in, in just your human element and the way in which you do business and the spirit in which you do business is exactly why you've been invited as a guest on the show because you embody it. And I think that's exactly what it is that we want to do is we want to have more people like with your mindset who is talking about actually common when you, when it comes back to it, the value is actually in the relationships. It's actually in those human elements. And that is actually what builds the trust. Because even if you have the most amazing book, if, if you don't deliver on that, whatever you write, you've written in the book from a, a human element and an experience perspective for that client afterwards, you're going to, you're going to erode that, that trust. So I agree with you in terms of for, for those of us who are already in it, experiencing this and delivering it from that human element. But there are so many businesses and ex, uh, experiences and where we've been shafted and it's not, not that spirit is not necessarily there. Um, well, and it's I, I think that, through. Mm. I, I, I think, um, unfortunately, I think that's also human. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that is, that is unfortunately part of our nature is some people um, view the world from a, a perspective of scarcity yes, and which, which forces them to see mm -hmm. business as competition. Mm -hmm. 
And actually business is not done very successfully as competition. It's done infinitely more mm. successfully as collaboration. Oh, I would give you so many high fives right now for saying that. Thank you. And, and it's, it's such wisdom that you bring to us. Sorry for interrupting. Please continue. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, um, when, when you look at business from a perspective of competition, the assumption that you have to make is that it's a zero sum game yes. that yes. if you and I are in the same marketplace and I win a piece of business that you lose the opportunity for that mm -hmm. piece of business. But that's actually not how business works. And it's not actually how money works because money is simply an idea of value, which means that it can be infinite. And uh, the more that you're able to create value in new and different ways, the more value is can, can be pulled to your business. So it's really this infinite uh, sort of uh, scenario rather than this finite scenario where it's a zero sum, where if I take you lose, it's actually, if we work together, we create something new and different. It's a creative mm -hmm. enterprise rather than a destructive enterprise. Mm. Such deep, profound insight there in terms of how to think differently about business, because ultimately what we're creating is, is, is value. And it, it, it comes brings into question the, the, the difference between value and profit uh, and, and, and how we focus, if we focus our energy on value first, the profit actually comes, but we, we, the, 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 it's not always in that order. And it comes back down to, like you say, that scarcity mindset, where, which then brings the competition into play. And we strip away rather than adding our combined or our collective minds. <laughs> Let's bring this back to, to marketing and sales and why this is also important. So in terms of the relationships, the value we're adding, the trust factor, I mean, what's really interesting about this conversation is we're not talking about Facebook ads and we're not talking about Google ads. And yet the conversation is about marketing and, and, and sales. We're talking about value, trust, relationships. Um, give us a little bit more, um, Steve, in, just to, you know, to bring it back down to why these concepts are so important in relation to marketing and sales. Well, so, I mean, you mentioned, you know, the sort of favorite tactics of the day, all these mm -hmm. online advertising platforms, they're great. They're wonderful. If you can, mm -hmm. you know, if you can find your customers there, uh, I'll be the first to tell you any way that you can profitably attract mm -hmm. a new client is a good way, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the question I think you've got to ask is again, going back to where we started, how many do I need? What's the most effective way for me to build the trusting sort of relationship that I need to create? And if you are trying to get thousands of customers, then you're probably going to need something like those online platforms to help amplify your message. Mm -hmm. But if that's not what you need, if you need in the, even in the small hundreds, you know, mm -hmm. or the dozens mm -hmm. or the few, <laughs> then other tactics are going to be far more effective and, and will not only be effective in the short run, but will be more effective in the long run. It's hard to make paid advertising work. People don't understand, um, mm -hmm. I think, just how difficult it is to put a short little message in front of a total stranger <clears throat> who, I mean, if you think about it in terms of Facebook, um, is not there because they're looking for advertisements. They're there to uh, connect with, with their friends and family. And all of a sudden here you show up trying to convince them to go buy something um, or even to go do something free, like watch a webinar, um, not the mindset that they're in. And, um, <clears throat> you know, and so making that happen is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult to do. Even professionals, professional marketers uh, who have studied this their entire career, are generally only hitting about uh, two out of 10 mm -hmm. in most campaigns. And if, and they're able to make that work because, you know, they're, they're professionals and they're doing it with enough profit that, you know, the other campaigns, you know, that, that uh, don't make it, don't sink the ones that do, but for a, a small business owner or for a, you know, a service provider, 
to go out and think that they're going to be able to spend, you know, $10 a day on Facebook, which you see advertised all the time. Oh, just spend $10 a day. Exactly. It seems so easy. Um, you had better have everything else in place and working. You'd better have your messaging dialed in. You better know exactly who your ideal client is. You better have all of your offers working that people are buying, not just your, your front end offer, but your back end offers, the things where you really have the highest profit. Um, before you go and, and really try and do a lot of paid media, whether it's online or offline, um, you know, and so there are ways that you can, uh, that you can go out and again, capture the knowledge that you have, focus it on the problems of the people that you're, you're you know, you really want to be a hero to, and then get that in front of them. And, uh, you know, you can do that with a book. You can do that with articles. You can do that with videos online. You can do it lots of different ways. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to be in front of real people mm -hmm. and real people who have the challenges that you can solve. Um, and so the, the first place we want to start is really go, kind of going back to knowing who those people are and where they congregate and how I can get in front of them the easiest, fastest, most effective way. So I was going to ask you, and I think you've partly answered it then, say we've got a service professional, they want maybe a dozen clients. I'm assuming you're talking, when you say dozen, you're meaning per month. So they want a dozen new clients per month. Um, or it could I, be, worked, actually, like you say, <laughs> high end, it could be I, for you. <laughs> I, I have I have worked with a number of, of businesses <laughs> for whom a dozen clients a year was a great year for them. Okay. All right. So say let's, we're talking about a dozen clients. We're not talking about the hundreds. What is the framework you're going to sort of go through with them? If you could give us that. So uh, again, we're, we're first going to get clear on who the client is. Yes. Who mm -hmm. they're trying to attract. And as we do that, we normally will begin to see patterns of, of commonality mm -hmm. between them. Um, maybe they're in a particular industry vertical. Maybe they are, uh, you know, if they're in a local community, maybe they uh, live in a particular area. Maybe they gather in certain groups. Uh, there is almost always a commonality there. And we want to look for that because that's going to begin to tell us where we can find these people. And, um, and you're, you know, you're either going to find them in, in the groups that they associate in or in their industry, or you may find them geographically if you have a geographically focused business. And, um, and, and so that's, to me, that's the key is how, number one, how can we find them? Because we need to go get in front of them. And then the second thing that we want to understand is how do the, how do our really ideal clients think about this particular problem that we're saying that we can solve? And, uh, and this gets into the mindset and the, and the buying mind of the client, because that's going to inform the message that you put in front of them. In every market, you've got people who will really value what you do. And you have people who don't put a lot of value on what you do. And there's nothing wrong with the people that don't put a lot of value on it. It's just not important to them. So don't try and, and, uh, and convince somebody who doesn't find value in what you do go put a message together that is going to speak so clearly to the people that want what you do that they won't be able to resist mm -hmm. that they'll, they'll look at it and say, where have you been all my life? <laughs> and, and, and so that's the first thing is, and we kind of break it into, we call it demographics and psychographics. We look at the demographics to generally tell us where to find people and mm -hmm. then the psychographics to tell us how do they think, how do they think about buying mm -hmm this particular service. And, um, and looking at that, we can generally put together the beginnings of a message. Um, and I say just the beginnings of a message because uh, for most businesses, they really haven't put together a strategic message before. Mm -hmm. They've gone out and said, well, I'm an attorney or I'm an accountant or mm -hmm. I'm a consultant and here's what I do. You know, come hire me. That's as far as they get. <laughs> but when you, you know, when you get into really speaking into what the customer wants, the first iteration of that's probably going to be a little bit off target. Mm. 
And we need to, you know, if you think in terms of archery, we need to fire that first arrow and see, are we aiming correctly? Yes. Did we even hit the target at all? Or were we completely off? Do you know, and what direction do we need to adjust in? And so the, the only people that get an opinion on that are your potential clients. Mm -hmm. And by putting the message out, you're going to get a response. No response is still a response. It's still mm -hmm. educational, mm -hmm. but you're going to get some, some kind of feedback from the marketplace and you're going to be able to adjust. And over time, as you iterate, you're going to get that so well dialed in that when somebody reads it, they go, oh my gosh, where, Carmen, where have you been? Mm -hmm. I've been looking for you forever. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I need because you will have tuned that message in just specifically for that type of person. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Thank you. And once you've got the messaging, is it only at that point that you start dabbling with more of the, the kind of uh, specific tactics that's going to increase the exposure? Well, I mean, you have to, you have to begin executing on some of the tactics right away. Most businesses mm -hmm. can't afford to, you know, to sit and wait and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. tune the message for yes, a year yes. or two. Mm -hmm. So often we're doing them at the same time. I mean, if you look at the books that I've written, I mean, I'm, I'm probably our best uh, uh, report from the laboratory. Um, <laughs> so I wrote my, my first book in 2014. Um, I've, uh, and, and I've written five. Um, and so if you look, the message evolves. It's actually a very similar message in all the books, but it evolves based on what I've heard back from the market. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten clearer and clearer about how to communicate it. Thankfully, the books have gotten shorter because I'm more <laughs> concise with how to communicate it for the reader. But, um, you know, and, and with most of our clients, it works that way as well. You know, and so, um, you know, you want to be thinking, how am I going to evolve this so that over time I am getting it so dialed in that, that the people I want to come to me, look at me as the only option for them. Mm. So for me, what this has shown this, this whole discussion is we've got to actually, everything that we think marketing is, we've almost got to take a step back from that because everything that gets chucked at us is it's, you know, do a little bit more of that, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you need more of this. And I know it's this, this is the flavor. And, and, you know, now you need to be in all these social media platforms. So this is almost going, stop all of that. And let's really take a look at the business, the client, what you wanted to achieve, um, what those key messages are, get it out there, iterate, iterate. And it's, it's, it's a, it's like, like you say, it's a laboratory. <laughs> it's, it's not a silver bullet and you, or, or even 30,000 bullets spread all over the show and you're going to get that winning <laughs> uh, formula. And so what I really like about this discussion is really let's think differently about our approach let's let's be more holistic in the approach and and um talk to people like you who've been in the trenches and who've done the research already and who who know what works and what doesn't work and together the collaborative approach for each business you you get that uh, winning recipe over time well and you know you hear a lot of people that want to tell you well it's just so easy mm -hmm. And if that were true, everybody would be a billionaire. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not that I, I, I'm, I'm a simplifier. I don't like to complicate things. Mm -hmm. I like to make things as simple as, as they can be made. But, um, you know, for someone to tell you, well, it's just as easy as this little tactic that you've been missing all this time. Mm -hmm. What they're really telling you is, well, I have this little tactic that I'd like to sell you. Please give me some <laughs> of your money. Yes. And, and, and I don't mean that any of those people are doing anything wrong or evil. I, I, I believe truly that mm -hmm. they've learned how to do something that they have found valuable in certain situations. Um, and what you've got to ask yourself is, do I have first, do I have all of the infrastructure in place to take advantage of this new piece of, of knowledge? In other words, do I, do I clearly know who my client is? Do I have messaging that already works? Do I, have, I, have I done sort of that foundational stuff? And if you do, then those tactics now become really powerful and that's the time to do it. What I see most of the time though, is that people 
don't want to do the foundational work. They don't want to do the thinking because it's messy and it's hard. And, you know, you're going to get rejected in some of that. You know, you're going to put a message out there that people aren't going to respond to. Mm. And nobody wants to go through that. They look, they want to look at that Facebook ad and go, oh yeah, I love that. I could get 50 clients in the next 10 days and all my problems would be solved because it's such a compelling promise. Mm. And um, I, I think when you step back and really do the foundational stuff, you actually build a business that will last. Yeah. And I think that's much more powerful. Totally. And, and, and that's exactly why we start business to begin off with, not to stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, to, to build a business that lasts. So ultimately what you're saying, Steve, then is for the, the, the most important transformation is to go from where, wherever you are right now in terms of attracting clients to where you want to be, the that golden thread there is is actually the way in which you think about it's the foundational work that needs to happen it's not more tactics right now it's to just pause for a moment think about what it is really know what you want actually and what that ideal client is i did speak with someone who who's been down the road and that is going to Tire, so the right kind of thinking is going to bring the right strategy and eventually the, the, the tactics. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Um, to sum absolutely. It up? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it actually gets really fun when you've got that foundational stuff in place, because mm -hmm. then a lot of tactics become available to you and you can yes. experiment. So I always keep a little bit of budget set aside for a new tactic. And mm -hmm. I always commit to it usually for six months to a year to really give it an opportunity to work. But I love tactics, you know, yes. I'm, I'm the best customer for all of those Facebook ads, <laughs> right? But, um, but they work far better now because I've, you know, I've done that thinking and they work better for a lot of the businesses that we work with because they've done that foundational thinking. Do you perhaps have a, one of your resources that, that you make available? Is there something that helps with this? initial foundational thinking, a questionnaire or something like that that you have? So the probably the best resource that we have to sort of assess where you are mm -hmm. with all of this is uh, something we call the inevitable growth scorecard because I, I like making growth inevitable. Mm -hmm. And so um, you can actually go to uh, thegrowthscore.com mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can take the assessment there um, there are eight different dimensions to it and you can rate where you think you are on each one uh, right now and where you want to be in a year. And it will really help you focus on which of the foundational areas uh, that need your attention now. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, give yourself the opportunity to focus on a few and move the ball forward. And then you can come back and take the assessment again, reevaluate where you are maybe in 90 days and see what you've made progress on and, and then, uh, you know, kind of go through and refocus. Thank you. That's very useful to know. And I'll, I'll put that in the show notes. Definitely. What would you say is your most cherished business success? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I've had it yet. Oh, um, okay. Or one you know, of, I, maybe not, not most, one of them that is close to your heart. That, that means a lot. Um, I, I'll tell you, I, I think it's just um, having now built the business that mm -hmm. I've built and serve the people that I serve. I love our clients. Um, they you know, they're they just doing such amazing work. They're experts at what they do. Uh, they went and got this great expertise and then they got thrust into the business world. And they, in many cases, they weren't prepared for having to do the sales and the marketing and all that. Actually, I was, I was one of our ideal clients. So in my engineering background, mm -hmm. in that first business, I, I got into that. And I didn't know anything about marketing. And uh, this is before Amazon. I, there was a Barnes and Noble bookstore around the corner from our office. And I was in there once a week buying a new book, trying to learn about business and marketing. And so you've got all of these people that we serve are out there 
who have all of these amazing answers for the people that they serve. And they are trying to navigate now the best way to get that word out so they can have an impact. To me, that's the success. So um, just in the last 90 days, we've, we've helped um, a dozen entrepreneurs get their book out. Um, uh-huh. And I've had, I've had um, people tell me I have wanted to do this my entire career. And then we've helped them in a matter of, you know, eight weeks, take mm-hmm. all of their best thinking and now put it in a form where they can get it out. To me, that's the accomplishment yes. is that it's, it's kind of multiplying the impact of all of these other people. And that that's profound. Actually, that's actually why we're going to business in the first place is to have that kind of impact and every book. So that to me is, is, is really a cherished place of success that you've, you've got to because every book that you put in out has impact in, in such, so the, there's a ripple effect through your marketing agency. And that is ultimately what us entrepreneurs are in business to do is to, to have that impact. And if we can have like what you said, said earlier, if you have an impact, you say a dozen. So a dozen um, entrepreneurs, but in the greater scheme of things, 10 years from now, how many people have those dozen entrepreneurs through their books impacted, which started with, with supporting them in building those foundations? So, um, Amazing work you're doing. Thank, thank you for going into the trenches and, and doing the work and being the 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 um, the, the rat on the, the or the hamster on the wheel doing the work in the lab for us, so that you could bring these um, uh, treasures and and do it with, which is now proven, uh, pro- proven methods, which which helps so much to short track this crazy track that we're on. Steve, one last message. If you could relay a message that speaks volumes, that's deeply meaningful to you and something you'd really want to share with the world, what would that message be? Very simple, seek truth. That is, that's profound because that's exactly what we're all looking to do is to seek truth to, I started the, the show with how do you navigate an ever complex marketing quagmire? You seek truth. And I, I, don't, I don't know that everybody is always looking to do that. And I yeah. think, um, and I think that's where we, when we fail to seek truth, that's where we get ourselves in trouble. And I mm-hmm. think, you can apply that on a spiritual level if you want. Mm. You can apply that in your family. You can apply that in business. You can apply that to marketing. Um, I just find that uh, as a fundamental approach to life, um, that's I've, I'm finding now I'm going to be 50 um, in about six months. I'm finding I ask myself, mm. you know, what's the truth here more and more. And uh, the more I ask it, the the uh, better things get. So mm. that's my that's my wish. And I'm I'm so 100% aligned with that. In the last year, since the world has gone belly up, I think there is no greater question to start to ask, and almost on a daily basis. Well, what is truth? Yeah, I think the very simplest way to uh, to to seek truth is just to ask the question. In this situation, what do I believe to be true? Mm. And it doesn't have to be earth shattering or, Mm. you know, Mm. uh, going to the foundations of everything that you believe. It might Mm. just be, I need to run a marketing campaign this week. Mm. What do I believe to be true about this? Or it might Mm. be, I need to collect some revenue this week. What do I believe Mm. to be true? Mm. And I uh, I think that's a fantastic place to begin. Yes. And it's interesting how the answers are within us. We just have to ask the question. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Steve, for, for the, the amazing wisdom that you've brought to us. And, and, and I want to share something with you because I had this conversation with my, my business partner, Gary, last night, actually, because in prepping for the interview, I read the, the podcast book that you have. I forget the, the, 
What is the title? It's podcasting some Pod, podcast prospecting. Okay. And I said to him, because I'm forever out there seeking truth when it comes to business. And I said to him, when I read Steve's book, I felt like I had found truth. Wow. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. And, and it's amazing that that's how you have, that's the note you ended on because you are so aligned with that, that it's in your work. And that was what I picked up. And, and he even said to me, she's, um, Wow, out of all the things that you keep looking for and in terms of marketing stuff, what you've shared with me, that certainly sounds like you found a framework that, that is closer to truth than, than, than what's out there. So thank you for that. Thank you. To all of those of you watching, listening to this, I, I think you know truth when you hear it. And I would encourage you, if you want to navigate this marketing minefield that we're in, as entrepreneurs, no matter where you are in your, your business cycle, I will have all the contact details uh, in the show notes. Read Steve's books. Like he has said, it all comes down to the foundations. Let's think right. Let's make it about the client and First of all, knowing exactly what it is that we want, because it all starts from that. Everything else follows from there. And um, seek truth. With that, asking those questions, we are sure to find the answers that are fitting for all of us. Until next time, lots of love.